God, this is wild dangerous. I'm gonna have to drop my speed right down now. Yeah, that's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> Many mistakes have been made in the last 100 days since I quit my job to move into this van to be able to pursue absolute pure freedom. Going from needing to be somewhere at a single place of work to be able to earn my money, to now having the freedom to go anywhere and do anything, yeah. I made some mistakes. I mean, imagine if you were given complete freedom to go anywhere and do anything, would you take advantage of it? Because that's exactly what I did. But I kind of think I went a bit too far with mistake number one. There we go, let me show you. So, what it is, the odometer, I refreshed it as I quit work. After nearly 10,000 miles in 100 days. Not just that. But I'm tired, man. I'm exhausted. I've done a lot of driving. Coming from a driving background, driving trucks and coaches for the last 17, 18 years, it's not bothered me massively. But when you're given the freedom to do what you want and you're still doing loads of driving, you kind of want to unwind a bit. Lesson number one, slow down a bit. So for me, I'd pick an area of where I'd want to go. So let's say you're still working Monday to Friday and you're planning your weekend. I would plan something that I want to do. I would go to that area and do it. And then I'd be sat there like, well, what do I do? I'd be flicking through TikTok. I'd see something in Scotland. Bam, I'd go to Scotland. When I'm living off the money that I'm currently making, yeah, I can't afford to just do that anymore. But how did I rectify that? Well, the way I'm doing it is I'm parking in an area that I have loads of things around. So I don't really need to move the van that much. Once it's parked, it's parked. I went up one of those fouls just over there. It's a bit windy, but how cool is that? Your sharp edge, Blaine Catherine just over there. More fouls all the way over there. The sun's just popping out. You know, ticking off another Wayne right that I'll, I've got that list. 214 Wayne rights. You want to climb them all. I think I'm now on 59. That tree line just there has got loads of deer down it, and I absolutely love to find deer. So I'll be going down there in a bit. I'll be doing a load of work and play while I'm actually here because this spot is absolutely perfect for phone signal for my Wi Fi system. I am still slightly considering Starlink though. There's been far too many areas where I'd love to go to and love to stay there to do the work but with no phone signal to upload videos, I can't work. So what do I do? I bag her off somewhere that's got phone signal. Starlink, that'll stop me doing it. So that's something that might potentially happen in the future. And on the flip side to that, instead of just coming to a location and being dead excited, I want to go out and do it now and go out and smash everything out that I wanted to do in a day. Now, I'm just gonna chill out. Take two days to do it all. I have noticed that I've become even more British. I check the weather on near enough an hourly basis now. Like currently, right now, as we speak, in about two hours, the rain's coming in from that de direction, coming over here. It's going to be crashing over the Skiddaw mountain range and absolutely soaking me. So I've got two hours to get out and have me walk so I don't get soaked later. But when I do know the rain's coming in, it's going to be in for a few weeks, I'll start looking elsewhere. What's the weather like in Scotland? What's the weather like in Wales? What's the weather like here? I could do with stopping to do that. Everything to try and stop the amount of mileage that I'm doing. The biggest thing um, that I struggled with towards the start, and I've since spoke to a lot of people and it's a common thing. Everyone was exactly the same coming from a hard working background into pure freedom, was what is your purpose in life? And you sit there and you think, oh, that's a bit silly, but it proper got me for around about a month. Starting to look like the rain's about to come in, so I figured I'd get out for a walk first. I mean, it was a case of you wake up in the morning and it'd be like, well, what do I do today? I've got no reason to get up. And you just tend to lay around all day doing nothing. Hello, sheepies. You see, having a purpose in life, it just makes things a lot easier and a lot more better for you. You've got targets to aim for. You've got achievements that you want to do. Well, I found mine and it's quite random, really. You see, I really, really enjoy making all these videos. So that's my goal to be able to make this a success. And that all comes from people like you guys, liking, subscribing, watching the video from start to finish, leaving random comments, even if they are the most randomest thing you could possibly think about. Let's face it, who wouldn't want to turn their passions into, um, into their career? This is gonna be absolutely amazing. By doing that, I'll be able to make people like my son proud of me. My missus, she could be proud of me. Stuff like that. Just little goals. It's the little things in life that matter. Just because you've been working towards your van life dream and all this sorts of stuff, doesn't mean you have to stop aiming for future dreams and goals. The world has enough bad in it at the moment. For every little win that you can get, 
just makes everything a whole lot more enjoyable. Jesus, I didn't realize T-Rexes were still around. Uh, that cloud's looking really brutal. You wouldn't think it looking at me face, would you? I'm like, I should have brought my sunglasses out. Oh, there we go. It started to go behind the back now. We're getting into the sort of deer territory now. I've seen a few up there in the past. I've seen a few over by the river behind those trees in the past. The number one spot down here, past the river, up the hill on the left. Along with all the mistakes I've made along the way on this first journey of sort of freedom run life, I've also found out a lot of stuff about myself that I didn't even know was there. I didn't realize just how impulsive I actually was. <laughs> I say was, <laughs> I still am. See something I wanna buy, I'll try and go out and buy it. See something that, oh, I wouldn't mind going experiencing that, I'll go and do it. There's the next deer spot and I can't see them where they usually were. Huh. I thought that was one up there, but it's not, that's just a rock. I'm starting to walk really quietly now because these are some of the areas where you're likely to see them the most. But all I've got to try and do is rein myself in a little bit. Stop being so impulsive. Then again, some of the impulsive moments and times that I've had have been the best. So selectively uh, stop being impulsive. Don't Stop spending money like it's just made, I'm made of money because I'm not. Uh, start being more impulsive towards the local adventures. I mean, I've done it before where I was like, oh, my friend's going up Ben Nevis, I'll drive there. Seven hours later, I finally get there, 300 quid in fuel. I just find myself massively reflecting over the last 100 days to see how I can make the next 100 days a lot better. There he is, Let's see him? Yes. Wow. <laughs> he was literally laying just down here in front of me and he's just galloped over into those trees. Oh well, I'm chuffed I've seen one, but it's starting to rain. Let's uh, take a little walk back to the van. Still raining the next day, but we've come down to Allswater. Look at that. What better way to uh, celebrate a rainy day than a bit of a swim in the water? I mean, it's raining, so uh, I may as well get wet. A bit too choppy to, for me to get the paddleboard anyway. That dude over there, he's a psychopath, so uh, let him do his thing. Uh, but I'm only going to have a quick dip. Oh, that fresh rain definitely made that colder. Now we've got a big storm coming in tonight. It's normally the time when I just sort of run away. And this was another problem that I want to try and sort out. Normally, like I say, I'd just run away. I'd find somewhere with better weather and drive all the way over there. But that cost me too much money. So my hope is that I can park exactly where I'm parked now. But a bit later on when it gets quieter, I can move the van into a better scenario. And I'm currently on the walk down to Glen Riding to try and stock up on a few essentials that I think I might need tonight. And while it's only just raining ever so slightly, I could always use this opportunity to build up my steps too. Let's face it, if the storm, I'm gonna be sat inside the actual van all the time. I wanna be getting some exercise round about now. What more exercise than a load of steps? Look at that for a cool little beast. I never even knew that was here. Thinking back, maybe I should have brought a backpack to be able to put some stuff in to be able to walk back to the van. I decided to have um, a little walk up the sort of like the Halvellan path behind Glen Riding, that's a bit wet, I'm not standing there. Oh, that's a big hole, I'm not standing. Anyway, check this out. How nice is that? It's like dead tranquil, obviously. That is all soaking wet. And then I nearly fell into uh, a badger hole thing. Just look at that, all the way down there. It's always nice to just have a plod around. Obviously I'm not going up Halvellan. One, I'm only wearing trainers. Number two, I've done it before. It's just nice while the storm's not truly hit that I can get out and get me daily steps up. But a fox is quite clever. The way I've got around it is the wind on Google Maps is coming that way. So I've blocked myself on this side of big mountains and fowls and rocks and stuff. So I shouldn't really feel it, but I should be able to see quite a lot of it out on all's water. That's the reality. See those people walking back there? They're the first people I spoke to in like two days. That's something you're gonna have to get used to. You're gonna have days where you're not gonna be speaking to absolutely anybody. And it's normally the miserable days where you feel the lowest as well. If you can get through them, you can get through anything. Time to head to the shop, head over back to the van, and then I'll tell you the mistakes I've made with the van, the actual problems that I need to fix. A few of the bits, we're inside this Amazon box. We have got first this. This is a 40 mil inlet for the tank. You see, the one I've got on my water tank at the minute is only a little short, narrow one. And every time I put water in, it doesn't really work very well. The next one is some clips. Now these are to stop exactly this problem. It also happens in the shower room as well. But anyway, here we pull the little plug up and out. See how the water's just staying there and then just bubbles and bubbles and then bubbles a little bit more. Eventually that water does drain down, 
but nowhere near as quick as it should. Those clips and a few extra adjustments to the wastewater tank are gonna fix that problem. There's also a couple of more problems to do with the actual water piping in the garage. To get to that piping, I'm gonna need it dry because I have to empty virtually the entire garage to be able to get to it. Bits I need to fix that have just arrived at Danielle's, so let's go back and pick them up. Why did I choose to come over the highest mountain pass in England while there's a massive storm going on. I mean, it's absolutely brutal. The rain's coming down. Every time we pass under a tree, there's a piece of twig stuck on the road, and it's only going to get worse as the night goes on. I wonder what it's gonna be like on the summit. I guess the saving grace for this is I've driven this road a million and one times, and I know the road like the back of my hand. The downside to that is, I also know this road has been closed for six months over the winter period because of a giant landslide. So it'll be interesting to see what it's actually like. Why is the temporary traffic lights here? I've never seen these here before. So um, I hope the pass is open. Looks like they have a little bit of flood in there, but look how gloomy the valley looks directly in front of us. God, I love the Lake District. I've actually got a really big video coming up soon once I've gathered together the funds to be able to make that video about the Lake District. I don't want to give too much away because it's a really good video idea, actually. I don't want nobody to really pinch it. But it, it is going to need some fun. So if you're new around here, please like the video. If subscribe, leave an absolutely random comment. The ra most random comment, the better. Oh my God, this is like properly brutal. There's loads of water coming off the fowls across the road. We're about to go up one of the steep sections. All the laybys are littered with cars with their hazard lights on where they've just slipped into the wall and stuff like that. This is actually way sketchier than I thought it would be. Just goes to show you though, experience doesn't always help in these situations. Saying that though, I class myself as being quite experienced just solely because I'm a professional driver. But no experience helps you when you've got all-terrain tires which are known for being really, really poor in really wet roads on tarmac. They're no good at all. We're struggling up this big hill. There's a big waterfall to the right. Look at how much water's coming down that. That is insane. But we're getting up there. The summit is nearly in view. And once I get to the summit, I'm gonna be a lot more at, oh, look at it coming down now. I'm gonna be a lot more eased after the summit, just because as you start to descend the other side, the road is a lot more sheltered than what this is right now. Oh my God, this is wow dangerous. It's proper sketchy. I'm right down to 20 mile an hour. And normally I'm flying up here at 40. You just got to drive to the condition. Oh no, we're in the clouds now as well. That's going to add uh, another layer of absolute, I don't even know the name of the word, but oh God, I'm Ah, second gear now, second gear. <laughs> I couldn't get up that piece. Just goes to show a three and a half ton van. Just can't get up, gonna have to drop my speed right down now. Just because what you're seeing on camera is exactly what I'm seeing next to absolute nothing. That's not my, oh, that is my full beam. So there you go, that's a bit better on normal headlights. We should be coming up to any second now, the Kirkston pub on your left with the big Kirkston lay-by on your right-hand side. That is the summit, and it should be along here. It's just along there, what's that on the left? Yeah, so that's the signpost to say you're up at the struggle. So, oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're not even gonna stop to show you this. We're just gonna head straight down. On the left-hand side, oh, I'm gonna have to proper drop my speed now. We're in the clouds. There's the Kirkston in on your left. There is, oh my God, so much water on the road here. Right, slowing it down, slowing it right down. Because I know for a fact, there is a ton of wild sheep down. Oh, look at that. As soon as you're in the clouds, you're out of it. Just instantly, I didn't even descend or drop. The cloud just disappeared. Doesn't mean that cloud's gonna come back though, does it? Uh, what's coming right down there? I can see a car further down, and I know the road narrows there, so I'm just gonna slow it down. This is like a sort of, this is how you drive a mountain pass, wrong. Thought I'd be in the clear down this side of the valley. <clears throat> Turns out I was wrong. Oh, right. Um, we are in the full force. Mountain Rescue are going up behind us. Uh, we are in full force of the wind down this side, which is something I didn't expect. And this side is a lot more woodlandy 
so there's a lot more debris just scattered across the road in random areas. It's uh, oh, the wind's blowing me everywhere. It's quite uh, sketchy, but we're not far now until we're down the bottom of the pass. Well, I'm glad that mountain pass is over. While I'm on the way back to pick up all these bits to fix the van, let me tell you about one thing that I really did do quite well on this van. That's my insurance. You see, I went with a company called Sterling Insurance, and that's because they can do normal quotes like your bog standard cars, motorbikes, vans, commercial vans that are not used for commercial purposes, full on motorhomes, camper vans, but they can also do custom insurance. With my circumstances, living in a van with slightly random jobs and multiple revenue sources, I've just got different occupations to what you'd standardly have, and I use the vehicle for purposes that you wouldn't really expect a normal vehicle to go through. So I thought a custom insurance policy would be perfect to me. I went on, done the online quote, and then they phoned me back up near enough straight away to see if I, all the details were correct on the form that I filled out. And then they changed one or two little pieces after speaking to them. They knew better than me. And then we went from there. They wanted to try and get me a bit more of a competitive quote. You could really tell how experienced the staff were because every time I asked them a question, although to them it might seem like a silly question, they answered it straight away with pure confidence. And I absolutely love that. But I got the feeling that they were actively trying to help me. And that's a great feeling to have when you're looking for good customer service. You think I was asking them sort of questions that you'd want to ask them knowing full while I was living inside the vehicle. If I have a problem with the vehicle, uh, on the road say it has an accident or whatever uh, is the insurance policy going to cover somewhere for me to sleep somewhere for me to stay and they were answering everything perfectly they said we'll give you a call back in 20 minutes to save keeping you on hold for so long and then um, we'll go through and get the right quotations and stuff perfect me expecting oh okay then they're just going to wait for hours and hours no 20 minutes later they phoned me straight back and the original lady that i was talking to dealing with all the quote it was her that phoned me straight back as well so i got the feeling that they were actively working on my quote rather than just hang up the phone with me call another person and so on and so on so now i can feel rest assured that no matter what happens on the road hopefully i will never have to use the insurance but if I do, I'm confident that everything's going to run smoothly. That's Sterling Insurance. I got a cracking quote and the customer service was perfect. It even come with 365 days of European cover. I'll leave all their links down in the description down below. It's definitely worth checking them out when you're coming round to insuring your vehicle. First major job, we have to drain the fresh water tank. That'll also reveal another problem that we've got to fix. That is how fast my wastewater drain actually drains. So you can imagine draining a 92 litre fresh water tank, a 10 litre boiler, and a 70 litre wastewater tank can take a bit of time. Maybe more than just a little bit of time. Now, like I say, there is a lot of problems with our plumbing system. Number one is this pipe work coming in from the actual fill. Well, that was just sort of bodged together. So uh, that's getting fixed with something proper. Over here, see the inlet pipe from the actual water tank to the strainer. Well, that's got a few kinks in it. So we've got to sort that out. And we've got this piece up here, which is actually upside down, which I've got to turn the road the way. Now I have got all the correct fittings, the pipe work and everything to do this properly with some pro pro proper pipe and fittings and stuff except one of the fittings that goes into the actual tank was the wrong size can't be bothered to wait and order new ones so i'm just going to try something a little bit more substantial i've undone the strap that holds the tank to the wall and i've put a block underneath it just on this side to be able to raise it up slightly that means any excess water that actually is in the tank isn't going to be near that outlet that's all the way down there because i've got to undo that one i've got to undo that one and replace the pipe i'm expecting a little bit of water to come out of, oh no, no, there we go. Just a simple case of one piece coming straight off there. It's coming off a much more of a straight angle, so it's not likely to kink. We've got a much longer piece, so there's a bit more give and a bit more play in it, and it's coming into the strainer at a lot more of a straighter angle with the strainer turned the right way up. I mean, it'll do for now. It's not ideal, it's not food grade, it's just a standard fresh hose pipe but I don't drink the water that's in there. It's mainly just for shower use or for boiling use. So it'll do for now until I can get the right part that I need to connect it to the tank. Next problem, before we strap the actual tank back in, we've got to get the top off the tank because you see this little tank connector just here. Well, when I originally tried to look for one, I couldn't get hold of one. This was all I could find. And it was basically just an old pond one that somebody had already cut down in the past. So we're going to get this off and whack a proper one on so we can get a really good fix on it to be able to secure the pipe to it a lot better what we're trying to achieve here is when this is actually on it's rocking away like that but then 
the water gathers down here and doesn't actually go into the tank very easily so i'm hoping to get this nice and streamlined and straight so that it fills up a lot quicker got the old tank connector out went to put the new one on and then the problem arised um yeah that's not gonna work is it <laughs> i've put the old fitting back on there just for now anyway and to be fair i'm probably going to start filling it from the top until i can get this actually sorted because i don't want that to pop off when i am filling it up and just fill all the inside i'm going to order another one of them the right size obviously that size is the right size just not that side now the rest of the plumbing issues that i've got with this van aren't in the back here they're all underneath so i need to fill this tank up test those few joints that i've just done and then put everything back in here to go underneath. A quick 10 litres dropped in the tank, turn the water pump on, and then in theory, drain all the air that's in the tank out so we can replace the air that's in the pipe work into water. There we go, that one's done. Is the hot done? Yes. Now the shower, we pull the shower out and we put that just there. Turn the shower on and that's working perfectly fine. Now let's check for leaks. Because in theory, that one down there should be dry and that one up there should be dry and you know what it actually is there and down there it's bone dry wow there's a quick hold to proceedings just there because i've just thought do you know what while i'm here i may as well go down and see me wrap people people that wrap the van and superior wraps in wigan solely because there's a little bit of work i want to done to the van nothing they've done wrong just something i want to add to the van they managed to squeeze me in right in between a few clients and the first job was to clean all the chrome can you already guess what's actually happening to this it's one thing that bugged me i had a chrome strip above the top of the grill and on top of the headlights after a bit of cleaning they got some gloss black i was a bit dubious about this but they said trust me just, just trust the process. I was like, fair enough, then let's see what it looks like. You see, the bonnet wrap that they did is matte black. The grill is partially matte black. That's not wrapped, that's just how it comes in the factory. So I was a little bit dubious about going gloss on the top of this, but it comes out mind-blowing. It's a great company to go with, Superior Wraps. As you can tell, they do a lot with all different vans, but they also have stuff like Aston Martins, Lamborghinis, G-Wagons. They do some really high-end equipment, and they treat your vehicle exactly the way that they treat a high-end client's vehicle, which is something that I absolutely thrive on. Afterwards, they said, we'll give it a good wash so that you can get some really good photos. On went the spray, the snow foam, gave it a good wash, a good scrub down, and oh my God, this is what it looks like now. How nice does that look? Just looks proper evil now. I like the fact that I wasn't sure whether or not to go gloss and then the recipe all map, but I really like it. Maybe I might go sort of gloss down here and here as well. I don't know, but I love it. And then the blacked out on the uh, headlights as well. I absolutely love it. I think it looks mean. Last two plumbing jobs aren't going to plan. I've got the van up on the levelers so that my fat ass can fit under. I may as well show you what's actually up. This is the wastewater pipe from the shower and that one over there is from the sink. You can see how it goes up and then back down and then up again. Well, I kind of need to do something to keep that up a lot more but drop that one down so there's not so much of all these funky angles going on. I think that's what's going to stop it from well, that's what's going to help it from draining a lot quicker out the sink. Next job, underneath the back, you can see my drain there. It drains really, really slowly. So I've got a bigger pipe and a bigger fitting to put up there. I lent my whole saw to a friend so that he could do some work on his plumbing and I haven't had it back yet. So I can't really do that just yet. You want to see what I have found? <laughs> I dug this out the back and I thought, you know what? Let's have a look at it and just see what's what. <laughs> Fat air horns. I've had these for ages. They're just going to be a gimmicky sort of thing, aren't they? Just sort of put them on see what it's like i'm th hoping i can find where the original horn is and just connect positive and negative and just see if it works off the natural horn for a bit this is so stupid i don't think it's going to work so i've unplugged the actual horn and just popped in the positive and negative cable straight into where the actual plug goes in dodgy as hell but i'm just more sort of curious whether or not this is actually going to work i guess we've only got one way of finding out like that on and then no, it doesn't. So I could hear a horn, but this has got two horns on it. So I've un only unplugged one. I plugged it into this, so it's not worked. So I don't know what's up with it. My God, look at this state of my hair. Anyway, after Daniels, I figured, you know what? I'll park up here. Obviously, I'm still demisting the windscreen before I can drive. I figured out, you know what? While I'm in this sort of area, my van's done over 10,000 miles now. I may as well take it down to the local garage that I use. Well, it's not really local. It's 40 minutes away. Anyway, I may as well take it there 
to get the oil and filter change done on the van. It's the only garage that I actually feel comfortable working on the van now, solely because not long ago, VW tried to scam me out of £4,000, saying my engine block was probably cracked and all this sort of stuff. Whereas I took it to these guys, recommended to me by Dubbed Out Community on Facebook, and um, they got it sorted for 500 quid. It was an EGR valve and not a cracked engine block. I am a sucker for good customer service. But anyway, we'll get this screen demissed. It's 6.43 in the morning. Why so early? If I don't leave now and get there early, I'm just gonna end up sat in tons and tons of traffic on the M56 from where I am now in Runcorn to get all the way over to uh, Stockport. It was literally, I kid you not, just over three months ago that I was back here having a service done on the van, which included an oil change. To the point where I still got, they give you an extra litre of oil when you have an oil service done here. And um, yeah, I still got that. I've not even touched it. It's not, never been opened. <laughs> Not a bad little courtesy car, actually. First time I've ever driven a VW Golf. Hey, look at that. That's quite smart. I mean, don't mind this over here. I went to Mackey's. The diet's going great, by the way. Thanks for asking. I'm looking forward to speaking to the garage when I go back and seeing what I would need to do to the van for a late winter, early spring Arctic Circle trip. That'll be quite interesting. So I'm, I'm assuming... Uh, I'm going to need a different style of oil, I'm going to need something like a block heater or something just to circulate and warm the coolant running around the actual engine because that will warm the engine as well. Um, I don't know, a new coolant, different screen wash, um, I'm going to need some stuff, I know I'm going to need some stuff but I don't know what but it'll be interesting to see exactly what and have an idea of how much that's all going to cost. I've got the van back, she's had her oil change, she's had a filter change and they've done a health check on her. They do that with most of the vehicles that go through, they check all your lights, your brakes, your wheels, your tyres, that sort of thing. I had a problem. You see I've got the rear lights on the back of the van and one of them, the fog light wasn't working so they took it apart, checked the bulb, the bulb was perfectly fine, all this sort of stuff was fine. They dove a little bit deeper into it and it turns out I've got a crack on the actual unit itself. A little bit of water has got in and it's perished the actual circuit board. So we've got another one of them on order. I've got to knit back slightly later and get that fixed straight on it's only a quick job two screws boom done as for the arctic information they said they haven't really done any vehicles that are preparing for that sort of temperatures minus 35 but i'll be up in the mountains so minus 40 all this sort of stuff so they said they're going to look into a lot of things i will need a slightly different coolant uh, a slightly different oil uh, the normal sort of stuff that i was expecting we were discussing about a block heater sort of style they're going to have a look around and see what's available how to get them installed what the benefits are and how to actually run that with a 12 volt connection because I'm going to need a 12 volt connection off a battery whether I use my leisure battery but I don't really want to if there's not going to be a lot of solar I can't use my van battery because I need to heat the block up the engine block before starting the engine so I can't I don't want to drain me starter battery while I'm in the middle of minus 40 up in the Norwegian mountains no we're thinking of an auxiliary battery this van comes as standard with a spot under the bonnet where i can actually fit an auxiliary battery but then it's how do we charge that auxiliary battery so we're coming up with loads of ideas loads of options seeing what's around i'm doing my research they're doing the research and just see where we go with that one it's really really i'm looking forward to that trip it's not going to be until february march time i did have a question about fuel um will the fuel freeze at that sort of temperature and he gave me an answer that i wasn't expecting i didn't even know it was a thing but in these colder climates if you fuel up in those colder climates which is what i'll be doing they have an additive already added into that fuel that stops it from freezing so you don't need to worry about that now, i've got stuff like the wastewater tank that's going to need to be insulated because that's under the van with fresh water tanks in the van so that's going to be perfectly fine i might need to add another heat event to go into the garage to keep all that warm and keep the batteries warm and stuff like that there's just a lot to think about a lot to plan and a bit of finances to earn there we go that's what's happened see that little crack on the light well water has gone in there whether it be from a high powered jet wash or whatever and this fog light down here had all corroded on the actual circuit board and actually ruined the well it wouldn't work it's busted solid the light was knackered beyond mot pass so we ended up getting a new one which is that one just there two bolts down there fitted it on i'll show you another problem that he found as well i don't want to be too noisy because one of my mates has parked behind me last night so i don't want to wake him up it's early in the morning because guess what i've bagged myself a week's worth of work 
solely because I'm planning a big Norway trip. Um, not going to be till early next year, like late winter, early spring. Anyway, check this out. See that pipe just there goes from my snorkel down into my airbox. <laughs> well, how that had come off. Oh, drop it down nice, nice and gentle and banging. But while I'm sat here with last night's tea and a cup of coffee, it's time for me to end this video. Next video, we're going to be trying to take my son, my 10-year-old son, on an off-grid night. All the time, he's autistic, and I've just been scared to take him off-grid. So we're going to try him off-grid, as well as on-grid, and do a comparison between the both, just to see which is better. Tune in next time for that. Thanks for watching. Peace out. If you're new around here, please subscribe.